Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. Today I'm going to cover injuries to the sternoclavicular joint. Injuries to the sternoclavicular joint and its associated ligaments are not as common as injuries to the other joints in the shoulder complex. The sternoclavicular joint injury represents about 3 to 5% of all injuries in the shoulder complex. The sternoclavicular joint injuries can have a traumatic or a non-traumatic onset. In traumatic onset, the most common sources include motor vehicle accidents, falls, or collisions during contact sports such as football, lacrosse, and rugby. A sprain of the sternoclavicular joint can occur without instability or with laxity. Dislocations of the sternoclavicular joint may also occur. They may be anterior or posterior. Posterior dislocations are less common than anterior dislocations and are associated with greater mobility due to the adjacent structures. The sternoclavicular joint is the articulation between the medial clavicle and the sternum. The clavicle is the medical name for the collarbone and the sternum is the medical name for the breastbone. So the sternoclavicular joint is the articulation between the collarbone and the breastbone. Several ligaments provide stability to the joint. The clavicle is the origin or insertion point of several muscles. The subclavius muscle helps support integrity of the sternoclavicular joint. A fibrocartilaginous articular disc is located within the joint and functions as a shock absorber. Symptoms of a sternoclavicular joint sprain include pain with shoulder and neck motions, point tenderness, weakness, limited symptom-free range of motion of the shoulder and the neck, and pain with deep breathing. A sternoclavicular joint sprain and dysfunction of the sternoclavicular joint should not be ignored or overlooked. The sternoclavicular joint is an important component of the upper body kinetic chain. Lack of proper motion of the sternoclavicular joint can be a contributing factor in numerous conditions of the shoulder complex and upper extremity. If the shoulder clavicular joint is not functioning properly, a greater workload is placed on the surrounding muscles, ligaments, and joints. This added workload may be a contributing factor in the development of thoracic outlet syndrome, neck pain, chest muscle conditions, pain and inability to perform deep breathing, and in the formation of several shoulder conditions. Thoracic outlet syndrome is caused by pressure on a network of nerves named the brachial plexus. The pressure can be between the anterior and medial scaling muscles in the costoclavicular space or under the pectoralis minor muscle. The costoclavicular space is located between the clavicle and the first rib. The clavicle is the attachment point of several neck muscles, including the sternocloidal mastoid muscles and the upper trapezius muscles. Additional stress may be placed on these muscles if the sternoclavicular joint is not functioning properly. The same can be said for the pectoralis major muscle, which is the large chest muscle. Part of the pectoralis major originates on the clavicle. Therefore, if dysfunction of the sternoclavicular joint is present, additional stress may be placed on the pectoralis major muscle and may be a contributing factor to pain or symptoms in the pectoralis major. Several accessory breathing muscles attach to the clavicle. The ability to take a deep breath may be limited due to sternoclavicular joint pain and or dysfunction. The shoulder complex contains four joints that work as a functional unit. These joints include the sternoclavicular joint, the acromioclavicular joint, the glenohumeral joint, and the scapulothoracic joint. Numerous muscles move and support the shoulder complex. A multitude of ligaments help provide stability to the shoulder. If the sternoclavicular joint is unable to perform its required movements properly, then additional demand is placed on the other structures. This can lead to overuse, fatigue, 
and injury of the other structures in the shoulder complex. This is the disclaimer part of the video. Please do not think that watching this video takes the place of seeing a medical professional. If you have pain or if you suffered an injury or if you have dysfunction of the sternoclavicular joint, please see a medical professional immediately. Do not hesitate. Please see a medical professional immediately. And again, watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Please see a medical professional to get an evaluation, a proper diagnosis, and a treatment plan. If you are performing exercises to rehabilitate a sternoclavicular joint injury, never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. If an exercise elicits or intensifies symptoms, please stop immediately and find a viable substitute. Never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. When you are performing an exercise, always work through a symptom-free range of motion, even if that motion is very small. Again, never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. And if you are performing an exercise, always work through a symptom-free range of motion. Always start or restart any type of fitness plan, any rehabilitation plan or prevention plan at your current health, fitness and strength levels. Do not start at what you used to be able to do. Please begin at your current health, fitness and strength levels and always increase the intensity in small, gradual, calculated increments. You can see a doctor of chiropractic like myself, or you can see another type of medical professional. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have seen numerous sternoclavicular joint injuries. As a doctor of chiropractic, I would do an evaluation, give you a diagnosis, perform a report of findings, and then start treatment. The treatment would consist of a chiropractic adjustment. The objective of the chiropractic adjustment is to restore proper joint motion and to optimize nerve flow. When performing exercises to prevent and to rehabilitate injuries to the sternoclavicular joint, you want to stretch all the muscles that attach to the clavicle, especially the neck and pectoralis major muscles. When you perform a stretch, move into the stretch slowly, hold a mild, comfortable stretch, and then move out of the stretch slowly. You want to focus on correcting all postural faults, for example, upper cross syndrome. You also want to strengthen the scapular retractor muscles. The scapular retractor muscles include the middle trapezius, the lower trapezius, the rhomboid major, the rhomboid minor. You also want to strengthen the posterior head of the deltoid and strengthen the posterior rotator cuff muscles. The posterior rotator cuff muscles include the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. Thank you everybody for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozella's Sports Medicine Report, where I covered injuries to the sternoclavicular joint. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can find additional information on the book, and you can also find my blog. My blog contains articles on chiropractic care, spine health, sports medicine, fitness, health, and nutrition. Again, thank you for watching today's video. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube page and always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Prevent all injuries, rehabilitate all injuries, and accomplish your goals.